Well, Daryl, mission accomplished through to the fifth round. What were your thoughts on the performance? Uh, yeah, I thought we did all right. I think uh, the, the we played sort of three games on the spin that are, you know two amateur teams and um, they, they were pretty good today. I thought on slot, you know they uh, uh, they came after us, throwed some threw some tricky bits at, at us. I think for us mentally, we're just we're just ready to to move on to the next level. Really, we've got Barrow next week. Um, I've watched them; um, they got beat by Alden, but they throw a fair bit at you. So, yeah, we're just ready for a new challenge. I think, um, and you know, we're in we're in both um, both competitions and uh, draw tomorrow. Is it? So we'll find out what happens in the Challenge Cup. But we're in the 1895 Cup. We don't know which cup we're in from week to week. So it's sort of we're bouncing from one to the other and just trying to stay as as focused as we can. And um, yeah, I don't think we were ever that great today, but we didn't need to be. And sometimes motivation-wise, that's uh, that's a little bit awkward. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we we needed to win the game. We did that convincingly, and um, yeah, we move on. I reckon we do sort of slide that under the table review wise and just move on and concentrate on ourselves and we've got a short week this week for the Saturday game next week so so yeah um, I, won't, I won't look into that in too much depth You saw some determined defence from uh, from the amateur team today you had to work hard at times yeah for the win. yeah yeah we did I, I mean I, you know they started pretty well didn't they and uh, they're a well organised team they throw some bits at you got some big boys out there who will make it tough Physically, I thought they defended some of our better players really well. Um, so, so yeah, you know, look, full credit to, to them. You know, I think um, they, had, they had a real dig at us t today, and um, well, we just had to, we had to, we had to win the game. I thought, I thought we just made too many unforced errors in the second half. I'd like to see us be a little bit cleaner, but you know, I get it from a player's perspective as well that um, you know you want you want to be challenged, and um, we're looking forward to, to that next that next level. What goes into the thinking and the planning for an 80-minute performance in games like this? How do you keep those motivation levels up? I, I thought we did a pretty good job last week. We dropped off for probably a six, seven-minute period. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just trying to respect the game itself, I suppose. And, you know, obviously respect the opposition. That's in, in, important. Um, you know, they're a bunch of hard-working guys who... Uh, who play a good brand of rugby league and are right up there in the amateur game. You know they're they're class. Um, so you've got to respect that. And um, but then you know when you when you go sort of thirty points to six up, it's what's there to keep to keep staying tidy. You know, and and that was that's the hard thing. That's what I found hardest today was to keep us focused in in the second half. And um, you know, I think we've, there's a couple of play. He was pretty tight, tight on the the play of the balls today. And that, that was, I mentioned to Harvey, he had two where he didn't play the ball. Nines don't play the ball as much as everybody else. It's not something you think about too much, but they don't. And he uh, he had two that were you know incomplete play the balls. Um, uh, but in general, I thought he was pretty lively, Harvey, and and, and he was the same last week. He caused uh, he caused him a lot of trouble. 13 tries, so you know plenty of positive positives. All the tries spread out across the team. What benefits do you feel as though you get from a, a team though, from playing in games such as this? Would you say? Well, well, you get through to the next round, don't you? I, th I think the benefit is to the is to the game as a whole. You know, you're giving to the game because amateur teams get an opportunity to come and play in a professional environment, and and, and they don't get that opportunity that that much. So. You know, for us, it, I don't think it's ever going to grow us as a as a team. You know, it's not going to, it's not challenging us specifically. Um, and I do think that you know we're in competitions too early this year. I, I, it don't make sense to me that you know we've got a round robin of 1895 cup. It don't make sense that we win by 100 points last week. You know, it's just that's not good for the game. I don't think. Um, you know, I want to see Newcastle grow and thrive in rugby league, but I don't think that's great. So. Um, you know, I think a more sensible approach to the start of the year would be uh, would, would benefit um, teams like ourselves a little bit more. But look, it is what it is. You know, we've cracked on with it. We've played against two amateur teams now, and we've fully respected them and everything that they're about. And um, you know, you benefit. I think in terms of the respect that people see you in because you do you do that. And you know, the games are an unbelievable game in in itself. And and I think we've 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 done ourselves justice in in paying respect to to the game and the teams that we've played against the last the last three weeks.
We mentioned 13 tries, 13 goals as well. 100% record for Max again today, and he's equal the club record today, as yeah. Mason did last week. Yeah. But uh, he's looking really confident as a goal kicker, Max, now, isn't oh, he? Wow, he's got a laser boat on there, you know. He's, um, not only is he accurate, but he's exceptionally long with his uh, his range as well. Um, so I think that, you know, he's been really impressive. I mean, we've got a number of goal kickers at the club, you know, Miles can kick, Lachlan Wormsley can, can kick, but. I think Max is is the pick, you know. He's like I say, he's he, he sideline. It's, it's the same. It's almost Kevin Sinfield esque, really. How straight he kicks the ball. So um, yeah, that's you know, that, that'll be a benefit at some point. Um, at the moment, it's it's just records, isn't it? But you know, you'd be talking about winning games in in the future, and that's always a valuable asset to have. There was an unfortunate incident early on with Toby Boothroyd. How is he at the moment? Yeah, What's so he, he, yeah, his, his AC joint. So it looks like he's ruptured, um, completely ruptured his AC joint, which is uh, a pretty horrible injury. I had, um, I had separation in mine when I played, and it's not a great injury. So yeah, he probably have to have that repaired. Not fully, um, you know. Don't know the full details yet, but that's what it looks like. And um, yeah, he spent a fair, uh, decent amount of time out with that. Just last one from me. There was mention of Kai Rodwell from <coughs> Parramatta during the week. Is that one that's got any legs that's likely to go anywhere? Oh well, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's uh, someone that we've we, we've considered and spoken to, and um, obviously at the moment he's contracted Parramatta, so um, yeah, we'll wait and see how that, that how, how that goes. But you know, it's somebody that that would be interested in in, in the future. But that'll depend on on what happens with him contract wise in Australia. Thanks, Dan. Exactly. On the way the, the draw comes up, and you, you prefer a tougher, oppo tougher opposition to build you up for the championship. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you know you, you're not going to win anything by you know by not by playing teams who, who aren't going to stretch you a, a, a little bit. And whilst it might be, oh yes, we'll get to the next round. It's you know that's probably as far as you're going to go if you're not get being being challenged. Uh, and we want to see how good we can be. I, I think we've had a couple of tests. You know, we, we played Wigan here, and they were. They were really strong in the forward part. They didn't have those those boys, those fast boys that they had out there last night. An unbelievable game that was, by the way. Um, but uh, that game and then the York game, uh, where I thought we were outstanding, we were actually mentally challenged. So there's been two games there that I, I think we know what we've got, but I want to really know what we've got, and that's when we get into these these games that are going to really test and challenge us, uh, starting with Barrow, and then obviously on the horizon. You know, Challenge Cup again, which is one, and then then we're into Bradford uh, Challenge Cup again, and then uh, uh, Featherstone. So you know they're, they're sort of just round the corner, and we know they're there. Um, and and the, I, you know, I talked to them, but I'm not going after them after that game. You know, it's um, it's frustrating, I think, for them and, and for the coaching staff as well. But um, it's hard when you've won by so many points in it to say that. Your edge partners, but we're going to cause not a not a bad performance, as you say, at last night. No, I just, well, just I mean, you you're looking at that going. That's a a resilience win, isn't it? Because they were under so much pressure, and whilst Penrith didn't really execute probably as well as they would have liked, to, there's you know, the way that Wigan defend sort of dictates to you a little bit. I thought the way they defended on the edges uh, minimised um, what they what they could do there, you know, and uh, you know, they kept turning the ball back inside, thinking. And I thought they were going to get Wigan's middle. Um, and you could see that some of their middle unit players were completely gone because they had minimal rotation opportunities, but they just kept turning up, and uh, that's Wigan, isn't it? That's, that's what they do, they just keep turning up, and that's why they're champions over here, and for them to add that accolade to the uh, to the list is um, is phenomenal, and good for the game. I think good for the game here, yeah, and I thought it was refereed. I, I know there's a little bit of controversy around uh, the, a couple of decisions, but I thought he's refereed really well in terms of the overall game, where we've gone crazy, super crazy in my opinion, and um, it can't continue down this track. You know, um, I, I really don't think it can. I think it's uh, it has to change for me. Um, otherwise, we're asking for serious trouble for our game. With the way the players seem to have reacted over the weekend, so do you think that change is going to come? Sooner rather than later, they're going to put the pressure on. Well, I think they should. You know, I think the players have got it within their right to to voice concern, um, because they're playing the game, and and at the moment they ain't got a clue what's going on. You know, if you look that that sending off, I look, I recognise health and well-being of players, 
Um, but you know what does what does No Brown do there? What what does he do? Impossible. It's an impossible situation, and I, I think we what the what we're doing is making it impossible for referees. So we want to make their job easier, not harder. And what we're doing is giving them a whole lot of rubbish to deal with, in my opinion. You think everybody's had enough time to, you know, develop their tackling skills after you know twenty years of tackling the same way? Is that is that well, part I, of the issue? I, I just think some of the decision makers don't haven't got a clue about what the game, how, how you practice yeah. to to change habits. Just you, you need a lot of time to change those habits. Um, the other Liam Watts one, for example. I wrote, I don't know what else he does there. Mm. I, I have no idea what I would coach there. No. You just say, well, you can't tackle him really. Mm. If he, you know, that don't make sense, you know. They're talking about the you know, lowering of height and things like that. And, but, you know, if, if somebody puts his head down there, what are you supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Very hard. So. Yeah. yeah, it's tough one. It's tough one, but for me, um, you know, I don't see the Australians going down that line. I think we've, we've been panicked into and been led by people who don't really understand the game, if I'm honest, I'll be brutally honest with it. Yeah.